Yeah, for desoldering, have a station set up here with a board to remove components. And we're going to show you removing a number of different types of components. And we have two different types of solder suckers or solder removing devices. We have this one here from Radio Shack. Vacuum desoldering tool. Comes in a nice little package. And we'll open that up and show you how that works. This is a, a simple vacuum device and you will press on this plunger and when you push this button it releases the, the plunger and creates a vacuum. And again you push down to prime the pump and you push this button right here to release it and suck the solder. Now in order to suck the solder it has to be liquid to flow up there. Now one of the things when you notice is that when you push this back in, you see the little rod stick out the tip there. That's a way of cleaning the pump. So you have to be careful when you're using this that you don't clean the pump and drop the solder right onto your board that you just tried to remove it from. Okay. Also over here I have a similar device. It has a, a pump, a release. It's interesting about this, it has a built-in heater. So this is a solder and iron and pump solder removal or vacuum solder removal device all in one. Now there are another method of using or removing solder, it's solder wick, but I, I do not show that and I'm not going to get into that with the reasons I'll discuss at the end of the video. Okay, we're going to heat up this solder joint right here, get it flow, get the solder sucker in there, and solder it out. You have to keep resetting the solder sucker and get that in there. Now I do this over here at the second terminal. It's a little difficult trying to keep it clear for the video here. And you want to try and get the solder sucker down as close as possible to that terminal as you can. Okay. Now that loosened up. Now be careful lifting on these because you'll pull the trace right up. Now again, that's loose right there. You can see that that was loose. All right. Okay. Now I've spun this around. And we'll do the other side. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use a solder sucker, but I'm just going to heat up this solder and lift the part right off. Okay? Next we'll go over and we'll do a through hole component. Now I've got this through hole component here and again I'm going to heat up and put a little bit more solder on there just to get some flux in there. Reset my solder sucker. Come in here, heat it up and suck that solder right out of there. Again, heat it up and suck that solder out. Now, those components look to be pretty well clear, but I'm going to get in here and try this again. Heat it up and get that solder sucker in there and just really go to work on it. Heat it up. Okay. The component that I'm trying to remove, this little two terminal jumper, is somewhat loose and I can work it back and forth a little bit and it will come out. Now we can do the same thing we can do the same thing with this solder sucker and this makes it a little easier. Again, clean the tip, make sure I've got a clean tip. Go in there and put it on here. Now one thing that's nice is that as it heats up you can wiggle it around one thing's nice. As it heats up, you can wiggle it around a little bit and suck that out. Now, as I just did that, I didn't have any suction from the pump. So in this case, what I'm going to have to do is take the pump apart and clean it. And we'll be back with that. All right. I've got my solder sucker cleaned. And we're going to come in here and I'm going to put the solder remover right here on this terminal, 
Speed it up. Make sure it's loose. Wiggle it around a little bit and suck it out. Okay. I didn't set that up, so it sucked that out. Now put this on the next terminal. Heat it up. You feel the terminal, the pin moving, and suck it out. Okay. Come over here to the next one. Put this on here. Heat it up. You can feel the pin moving, and suck it out. Here we go. Again, feel it moving and release it. All right. Now come over here. Root and it's loose. Reach in there, pull it out. Okay. Be careful when these things, when you work with this, it will be hot. Reach over and grab that terminal we just uh, desoldered, and you will burn your fingers. So you might want to use a pair of pliers on those. We have this LED here. What I'm going to do is go through that again and show you about the removing of the LED. Okay, clean the tip. Prime the pump away from the board and come in here and heat up the first pin. Loosen it up and suck that solder out. Now we come down here, hit the next one. Loosen it up and suck that solder out. Now on this first one, the second pin is nice and loose, but the first pin is not. So I'll come back in here and heat that up again. Make sure it's loose and I can feel the LED wiggling on the other side and suck it out. Now I can sit there and come back in here, reach around, and pull the part out. Okay, nice and loose. And there's my removed LED. A couple of things when working with solder sucking, solder removal is to pay attention to, is your circuit board down in here. The application of too much heat on these areas will cause the traces to delaminate. Delaminate is where they pull away from the board and essentially you've lost your connections at that point. That's one of the reasons why I don't like to use solder wick. Solder wick applies so much heat in the area and it's very easy to put too much heat in here and delaminate the board. Now when you're using the handheld solder sucker and a solder and iron, again keep the iron clean. Come in here, put some solder in there, hold it, get it nice and hot, then come in with the solder sucker and suck it out. The closer you can get this solder sucker to the board, the more suction you'll have and the more pulling power you'll have. We have these components. What I'm going to do is just use the solder and iron and some solder. I'm going to come in here to this component and apply a little solder on this side, a little solder on that side, and just keep going back and forth, heating it up, and there you go the part is off. Okay? Pull that part out of there. Then I come back with my soldering tool, my solder sucker. Prime it. Heat it up. Pull the solder off. Again, prime the solder sucker. Come back. Heat it up. Pull the solder. Now I've got a nice clean pad there to work with. And my part has been removed. This part right here is a 44 pin PLCC. To try and take those off of the board takes a lot of practice and they, they can be quite difficult and very, very easy to damage your board. One of the ways that I use, there are two different ways of removing it. One of them is a hot air remover. It applies even dosage of hot air on all four terminals at the same time. The solder will heat up and the part will fall off. In absence of a hot air removal, I'm going to show you a technique using an X-Acto blade. And what we'll do is we'll take the X-Acto blade, the knife, and we'll cut right along here, cut all the leads off one by one. And that cutting will then we could pull the part out. Now it's assumed the reason you're taking the part out is because the part's bad. 
So cutting the leads won't hurt anything and will help us uh, prolong the life of the board. As I go along here, I'm going to use the knife and cut out. I just kind of go right up, right as close to the edge of the circuit of the chip package you can and just cut each one of those little leads. Simple little cut and you'll hear it snap and then you can come along cut the other side out once you get the hang of this you know you'll find the exact amount of pressure what's important in doing this particular method is a very very sharp exacto knife Okay, a sharp razor blade knife and you can hear the leads cut again the key to cutting is to hold the blade as close to the package as possible and you'll cut, them off, cut the leads off one by one. Okay, come back here. Now I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. I'm going to be able to see this, but I need to get access to the, to the leads. Okay, just about have them all here. And rotate this back. Now, you see here I'm going to lift up, and if it won't lift up gently, I must have a couple of leads left to cut. I'm going along here. Okay. Okay, now I have all the leads cut around here, and you can see with this, you can see the chip is just coming out. I lift it up, and on the other side, I think there's one lead left that I didn't get. Okay, so I'll get in here, get really close, and cut that lead off, and you see the chip just falls away. Chip is out of there. What we're left now are all of the leads still attached to the surface mount pads on the circuit board. So what I do is I come along here with my soldering iron and clean up each lead one at a time. And as you go through here, you can preserve these very delicate surface mount pads and pull off all of the leads. I'm going to just do one side here, clean it up. And then we'll cut and zoom in and show you what, what that is. Now if we look right down in here, you can see the pads are clean. And up in here, we still have all the pins. What you'll need to do is go all the way around, remove all these pins here with your soldering iron, cleaning up the pads as you go. Since you're only removing one pin at a time, it makes it very easy for you to clean up the board without damaging the circuit board. You've got the solder sucker, <clears throat> you've got the hand vacuum solder pump. Remember, keep it clean, keep it operating. Don't forget to take it apart and clean it after so many uses to get that solder out of there. You can oil the O-rings that are in there to keep this pump working well over its lifetime. Keep the tip as close to the soldering surface as possible to provide maximum vacuum for sucking out the solder. If you, use the, if you use the heated soldering tip, again, keep your tip clean. Go through there, keep the soldering sucker clean. As you, as you operate it, make sure that you can hear the vacuum. That's the same for both of these solder suckers. If you don't have anything happening, chances are your solder removal device has gone and uh, gotten plugged up. This one here, it's very easy to get plugged up, especially someone will use it on the last time and then leave it dirty, leave it plugged up, and then turn it off so the next time you power it up, it always starts up plugged up. So after you finish using it, run it a few times, clean it out, make sure it's still operating, and then go ahead and, plug, and turn it off.